In section 5.3, we're going to look at the explicit formula for geometric sequences. So on Google Classroom, we'll have the link to the Desmos activity, which we will go through as a class. Um, so I'll have you click on that, and this is what it will look like. So the first is match the following terms for their definition. So for example, you might see um, a geometric sequence versus an arithmetic sequence, so those would not be together. Um, and let's look at our list of numbers here. So this one is being multiplied by negative one-third every time, so this would be a geometric sequence, so that could overlap. Here's another list of numbers, which is a sequence, and this is going down by 0.5 every time, so that would be an arithmetic sequence. Um, the 11th term in a sequence, what would that be? And that would line up with a sub 11. The first term, what does that look like? And that would be a sub 1. And then we have um, this a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And we learned um, in our last lesson, that's the explicit formula of an arithmetic sequence. We can match those up. n is the term number, and the common difference is d. So we have our little card sort there for the warm-up. And um, we will review arithmetic sequence, um, the explicit formula, so here's your check for understanding. In January of this year, there were 13 inches of snow on the ground. As the daily average temperature increased, Henry measured the amount of snowfall remaining at the end of each week. Here were the numbers that he found. 13 inches, and then he had the next week 12.5, and then 12, and then 11.5, 11, 10.5, 11, and 10. Can you select um, the correct explicit formulas for the data? And there might be more, more than one that is correct. So we talked about the explicit formula. If you know the starting value, the first term, a sub 1, and we do, that's 13. And then you know the difference, the common difference, d, and this is going down by 0.5 every time. You can use this first formula, where a sub n, so to find the amount after any number of um, weeks, you could take 13 minus 0.5 times the number of weeks minus 1. So that works. The second one doesn't work because it's adding um, half an inch every week, and we see that it's going down. Um, we learned that if we distribute and combine like terms, that we could come up with other um, explicit formulas or ways to represent this information. So actually, these last two work as well. So today we're going to be looking at the zombie problem, which we did talk about in the exponential unit last semester. So recall the zombie problem from last semester, um, and there were several strains, but in this one, a zombie enters the school. Each day it infects someone new. New zombies can also infect one person each day, so complete the table. So if we take a look, um, the first day there's that one zombie that enters the school, and then um, after that day he, he can infect one more person, he or she, they. So two zombies. The next day there are two zombies. They can each infect one more person, so there's now four. The third day um, there's four zombies. They can each infect another person, so now it, it doubles to eight. And then we have 16 and, and then 32. And so if you recall, this function, if we're multiplying by the same number every time, we consider that exponential. So this would have, um, we would have, uh, right here, it's, it's being multiplied by 2 every time. So we could say the common ratio is 2. Uh, we could say that um, we're doubling uh, the amount of zombies is doubling. Every day, and if you double it every day, that would be a form of exponential growth. Okay, so the zombie problem continued. The, t the number of total zombies is exponential. Write down the exponential equation for the situation where y is the number of total zomb zombies over x days. So, again, something that we learned um, last semester, last unit, exponential functions. So, we know we could write this equation y equals, and then the starting number of zombies, we started with one zombie, and then it doubled every day. So then to the power of, I'm going to hit shift and then the like caret key or six, and then I can get that exponent. You can also use the keyboard, and the exponent is that A, B button. So if you waste to do that. But here's that exponential uh, function. The starting value, it doubles every day, and x is the number of days. 
So the explicit formula for geometric sequences um, is the main goal for today. We looked at the arithmetic. You should be comfortable identifying an arithmetic sequence and, and writing that um, ex explicit equation. And now we're going to take a look at what's the explicit for geometric. So the sequence representing the total number of zombies per day, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, is also considered geometric. Since it's also exponential, one explicit formula that you could use is y equals a times b to the x. But a is... The, a would stand for the number of zombies on day zero. So if we go back, we do see that zero, um, on day zero there's one zombie. On day one there's two zombies. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, since sequences, like your list of numbers here, they start with day one. They don't typically start with day zero. You have to shift your equation um, for the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. So again, if it's a list of numbers and we have the first term, we'd have to think, well, what, if, what was the zero term? And so to shift it, we have this n minus 1 in parentheses right here and that shifts it so that we take into account the zero term if we start at the first term. So it says let's test this formula out. Find a sub 3 using the formula. What do you get? And then we'll compare our answers. All right, so I'm going to write down the explicit. Give me one minute here and I'm going to share my iPad. And you want a sub 3. Okay, so I just wrote down the explicit formula that we were given, and then we want a sub 3. And again, n is the term number, so when you see a sub 3, it means how many zombies are there um, total on day 3. And so first we need the first term, so a sub 1 is the first term. And if we look, how many zombies were there on day 1? And on day 1, there were two zombies, um, because it had doubled from the starting day. So on day 1, there's two zombies, so I'll plug that in. And the ratios, what is it increasing by every time? It's doubling. So that's r is 2 here. And then the n minus 1 here, n is 3. So the 3 minus 1 power is really a 2. So really we have 2 times 2 squared. And then if we solve that, you could type that into your calculator. We can pretty much do this one without a calculator, though. We know that 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. So we can say that on the third day, there are 8 zombies according to our rule. And we better double check our answer. Um, so we can look at, what does it say? Yeah, so if I go back, we can see on the third day here, there are eight zombies. And so this equation works. All right, so we got eight zombies. You can type that in, submit it. Okay, uh, so we're just gonna practice using this formula. A certain strain of bacteria triples every day. So again, if, if we're multiplying to find the next term, that's the common ratio and that would be considered geometric if you multiply by the same number every time. So we, we don't use the arithmetic formula from the previous lesson, we use this new formula for arithmetic, um, or sorry, for geometric sequences. So this one says the first day you start with two bacteria in a petri dish, um, and it triples every day, select the explicit formula. All right, so we need starting value first. We're gonna start with two bacteria, so we know our equation needs to start with two. So it's looking like this one. And then uh, it triples every day, so there's the 3, and then it's just to the n minus 1 power. So the reason why I chose that middle one is the first term is 2, which we start with, and then it triples every day. And that growth rate is um, the base of the exponent. All right, let's try this one. A certain, again, uh, continued. A certain strain of bacteria triples every day. The first day you start with two bacteria in a petri dish. How many bacteria will there be in the dish on the seventh day? Okay, so again, I'm going to write down that general formula. So let me minimize this. Okay, so for this problem, we start with two bacteria. It triples every day. And we want to know how many bacteria there are on the seventh day. So it's asking us to find a sub seven. So there's what it means. If n is 7, it means how many on the 7th? How many bacteria are there on the 7th day? And so we have 2 times 3 to the n minus 1 power. And that's going to be 7 minus 1 or 6. So I'm just going to go ahead and write 6 right there. And then I can go ahead and type that into my calculator, which I have right here. I'll just pop it up. Okay. So you can use your graphing or scientific calculator. And I'll do 2 times 3. Oops, please. 2 times 3. Um to the power of, oh, I have too many parentheses there, to the power of n minus 1. So again, it was um, 7 minus 1, which is 6. So I can type in 7 minus 1, but I'll just do the 6. Okay. 
And we can see, whoa, since it's exponentially increasing, on the seventh day, there's 1,458 bacteria because it, again, triples every day. So let's write that down, 1458. So I'd have you guys share that with the class. All right, let's try this one. Um, let's find the ratio. We have the sequence, this ordered list of numbers, 1, 3, 9, 27. What's the ratio? How did you find it? And we talked about if it's geometric, to figure out what you're multiplying by every time, you just have to take one number and divide by the one before it. So an easy number to, number to pick is like 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3. You could do 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. You could do 27. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So again, our ratio is... 3, and how do we find it? Well, if it's geometric, you can take, take any number and then divide by the number before it. Okay, so here our ratio is 3. You multiply by 3 to get to the next term. All right, let's, let's choose the correct explicit formula. We need the first term as 1, and it's tripling every time. So which one shows us that? And it would be this third one that starts at 1, and it triples every time. And again, to the n minus 1 power to account for that 0 term. All right, can you choose the explicit formula for this one? So we see our first term. We know it's going to be the second or the third one. But we got to figure out what are we multiplying by to find the next term. And to find the ratio, you just take any number and divide by the number before it. So I'm going to pick 14, and I'm going to do 14 divided by negative 28. And I'm going to get negative 1 half. So it ends up being this one right here. And again, to find the ratio, you just take any number divided by the one before it. A positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. So we can see that it's decreasing, so the ratio is 1 half. And it alternates from positive to negative, so there's that negative in there. So take care of it. Okay, um, let's find the 12th term of the sequence. So first I'm going to write the explicit formula, and it's 1, negative 2, 4. So our starting value is 1. The ratio, you take any number, so I'll pick the negative 2, and divide by the 1 before it. So negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. And so if I write that out, we would say for any term, we take the starting value 1, and then the ratio... And I forgot it already. It would be negative 2 to the n minus 1 power. And this particular question is asking us to find the 12th term, so a sub 12. So here's what it looks like. And right here, if I plug in, the 12 minus 1 is the 11th power. So I'm just going to put the 11 right there. And then again, I can type that in. So in my calculator, here's what it looks like. 1 parentheses negative 2 to the power of, and it was to the 11th power. So whatever device you're using, just make sure you get the same answer. I get negative 2,048. So we would say a sub 12 equals negative 248. Okay. I have to double check in case I forget. Okay, so then typing it in, you can just type in the answer. So negative 2048. Some of you like writing a sub 12. If you want to write that in, you can hit a and then um, shift and then the like um, underscore button. So that's how I can get a sub 12 if I want it. Um, so again, it was shift and then the underscore button next to the zero. So you can submit your answer. All right, let's look at one more example, it looks like. Yep, and then we're done with the investigation. So a bouncy ball is dropped such that the height of its first bounce is 6.5 feet, and each successive bounce is 61% of the previous bounce's height. <laughs> what would be the height of the sixth bounce of the ball? We round to the nearest tenth. All right, so if you're imagining what this looks like, again, we have this bouncy ball, and you drop it, and then it rebounds to 61% of its height, and then it drops and then it rebounds, and we can see that it's like getting um, lower and lower to the ground every time. And it is geometric, right, where it's 61% of the time before is the height. So we can actually write the explicit equation for that. So we would say, all right, for any term, we take the starting, okay, the first, the starting bounce height is 6.5. So that goes first. So after one bounce, there's the rebound height. And this is, it rebounds to 61% of its height. So we're going to use that, and re recall in the um, exponential unit, if you had a percentage, you change it to a decimal. So divide by 100 or move the decimal over twice. So that will be 0.61. There's 61% of the height before it. 
And since it's um, we started with the first bounce, we account for the zero bounce by the n minus 1. So there's what it looks like. And then the question here says, how far or what would the height of um, the ball be on the sixth bounce? So we're looking for a sub 6 here. Okay, so a sub 6 equals 6.5 times 0.61 to the n minus 1, 6 minus 1 is 5, so I'll just put the 5 here. Okay, let's type that in. Um, where's my calculator? Alright, so 6.5 parentheses 0.61 to the power of 5, and we can see that it, it starts to not bounce up very high by already the, the 6 bounce is 0.5489. What does it say to round to? Round to the nearest tenth. Tenth is one after the decimal, so 0.54. The four would mean that we would keep it at 0.5. So it's about 0.5 feet off the ground. And then you would submit your answer. So your assignment is um, kind of a mix of these. Uh, number one, can you write the explicit formula? Can you use your explicit formula to solve? And then there's some word problems here, like the bouncy ball problem. Um, so you get points for doing... Uh, this classwork and it says your answers are recorded. Now log on to Delta Math and complete the 5.3 explicit formula for geometric sequences which is due tomorrow or the next time we have class that morning um, and then you can close out of this activity. So head to Delta Math and finish explicit the explicit formula for um, finish it before our, we meet next for class.